Now another day, another embarrassment for Vice President Harris on the world stage because during her remarks in Munich yesterday on the situation in Ukraine, the Vice President appeared to be totally, completely, utterly unprepared, and she gave yet another rambling, incoherent answer, falsely claiming Europe has been at peace for 70 years. Take a look. We still sincerely hope that there is a diplomatic path out of this moment. And within the context then of the fact that that window is still opening, although open, although it is absolutely narrowing, but within the context of a diplomatic path still being open, the deterrence effect we believe has merit. I mean, listen, guys, we're talking about the potential for war in Europe. I mean, let's really take a moment to understand the significance of what we're talking about. It's been over 70 years. And through those 70 years, as I mentioned yesterday, there has been peace and security. And of course, it only got worse from there, as Harris said sanctions would absolutely deter Putin, despite also saying that Putin already made up his mind to invade Ukraine. And just another baffling contradiction. So which is it? Ask yourself, uh, what is all of this turmoil going to do to energy costs around the world, rising gas prices, a 40-year high of inflation we have now, a barrel of oil almost 100 bucks? Some economists thinking it might go to 150. Does the Biden team have any solutions, any answers? Here with Reaction, former Hawaii Congresswoman uh, Tulsi Gabbard is with us. Tulsi, thank you. How does she say on Sunday that she believes sanctions on Russian, Russia would deter Putin. Um, and then, on the other hand, talk about when America stands for principles that we hold dear, we put ourselves out there in a way that we may incur some costs. We're already paying a, a buck fifty more a gallon for gasoline. Now we're going to pay three dollars more for a gallon of gasoline. Yeah, Sean, uh, I, I want to I focus on those two points. But first of all, my gosh, this is embarrassing. It's, it's hard to keep track of all of those jumbles of words. And it's clear that she was sent there uh, to be the voice of the United States as a purely political calculation. You and I both know she has no foreign policy background, no foreign policy understanding. She has no concept of the cost of war, nor does she have the temper temperament necessary to be the voice of the United States on the global stage. So it, it's embarrassing to see this play out. I, I want to talk about the two examples uh, that you raised there where she talked about deterrence and sanction. How do, you, how do you deter someone by punishing them before they do it? Uh, it it's, it's very simple. This is kind of like grade school understanding, where if you say, I'm going to punish you before you do something, wouldn't a kid say, OK, fine, well, I might as well go ahead and do it anyway? Uh, this, this is not rocket science here. And, and secondly, talking about incurring cost. And this one hits very close to home because Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have both said, you know what, we are going to incur a cost. They're not going to pay the price. They're multi, multi millionaires, both of them. The, the power elite are not going to be negatively impacted by this continued uh, escalation. You know who will pay the price? It is hardworking Americans all across our country and, frankly, people around the world who are already paying the price and will continue to see things worsen. Uh, this energy and gas crisis, raising prices, as you mentioned, we'll see those continue to go up. We'll, we'll see that squeeze happening across the country and around the world. Russia is a major exporter of wheat. We'll see those costs increased around food. Uh, Russia is also a major exporter of nickel, which is a major uh, element of, of the electric vehicle industry. The, the list goes on and on about the direct impacts that the American people ourselves will have to pay, as well as the impact uh, on the global economy. So really what they should be saying is not we are going to incur costs. They should be looking directly at the American people and saying, you know what, you are going to pay the price for this. And yet they have not once justified to the American people how their policies and their actions actually serve our best interests, how they serve our national security interests, how they serve our economic interests. They have failed to do that, and the American people will be left holding the bag. Tulsi, I want to be very clear. I absolutely, positively do not believe in any way that the United States should be in, involved in this conflict. But I do believe that we, Joe Biden's energy and economic policies created all of this, a 40-year high in inflation, 
uh, on average about a buck fifty more a gallon. Everything we pay for costs more. Uh, add to that this situation where because we artificially reduced the world's supply of energy, that then forced our allies right into Putin's hands, and he now controls their destiny, the lifeblood of the world's economy. You had an interesting theory that if only Biden would have said, no, Ukraine will never be a part of NATO, you think it might have been able to, we might have been able to prevent things that way. Explain that part. Uh, it, it's really just looking at the world through a very realistic lens, Sean. It's understanding the world that we live in and not the world that maybe some people wished existed. And that reality is Putin has made very clear all along that uh, their security in his mind uh, is what's at stake here. And they but do not want to see interrupt you, U.S. Putin, and NATO Putin troops also can... said Ukraine is not a country. And he has been saying this going back many, many years. So this has been these territorial I, I ambitions on, have existed on the security a long time. Component. They, they have. They go way back, and they, they pre-exist this, this uh, moment that we are facing. But with regards to U.S. and NATO, just like we would not want Russia to come in and start putting their tanks and missiles on our borders, either with Mexico or elsewhere, uh, Russia says, hey, I don't want U.S. and NATO coming and making their military outposts on our borders within Ukraine. Guess what? The United States doesn't want that either. NATO countries don't want that either. So why not recognize, say, hey, this is something that actually is common ground. It is highly unlikely Ukraine will ever become a member of NATO. Let's take it off the table, and immediately that would de-escalate these tensions and take that reasoning away from Putin for him to build up this presence on Ukraine's border. I might be a little more suspicious than you in believing that I think this is very personal for Putin, and he's taking this as this is Russian land and we will take it. And how far he goes with that, I don't know. By the way, he's speaking at CPAC. I was going to be there. I had a, a conflict. I'm not able to go, but uh, congratulations. And uh, I look forward to watching your speech. Thanks. All right. Thank you for being with us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.